Yeah, yeah. Why do you think so many Americans are are pro two A or, uh, you know, why do you think? Because you have to be dense not to be one. Like, <gasps> oh <fuck>? shit! <laughs> My dog is gonna go up and fucking lick the fucking criminal. He ain't gonna bite him. Like, I love you. <laughs> My dog won't even get off the couch if somebody breaks <laughs> <thinks> him. <bro. laughs> She's yeah. gonna look, pop her head up and say. Like, a pistol on a brace it may, turns into a gun makes it more you can have a higher caliber weapon a higher caliber bullet coming out of that yeah. gun that's not how it works welcome everybody to an episode of godspeed podcast i am your host dan eats everything and I am Joe Guy Mead. Howdy. Howdy. You look like you fucking tripped over an eagle. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and fell ass first into like some beer and burgers. What kind of beer do you think? Heineken. I'm just kidding. Budweiser? I don't know. All right. Tranny tranny beer. That's Bud Light. I don't I don't drink light. Budweiser is Bud Light. Eh. Budweiser is American it's for the beer. same company. It's tranny beer. Yeah, but Budweiser didn't send their uh, their beers to. It's the same company. <laughs> Listen, they got different different people, uh, promote doing promotions for different flavors. Okay, and Budweiser has Clydesdales. And okay. And Bud Light has old males so or females she males yeah <laughs> yeah you want to talk about where you've been huh <laughs> so you want to talk about where you've been oh where you been germany <clears throat> it was awesome i wish i was still in germany right now but I'm tell not. what's germany like man sorry uh uh my voice is a little fucked up i had to I had to do something. Uh, we'll some insert. America, so, some America. You had to yeah, do some I, America. Business. I was excited about. I was excited about some stuff in America, and I got pumped. And I, uh, I I'm losing my voice a little bit. I'll, we'll insert a clip here, but. Uh, so yeah, I was fired up, man. All right, good. good. Pretty cool, huh? What really happened? <laughs> We'll insert the clip there. That's what happened, man. Oh. You'll see. I'll send it to you. All right. Uh, yeah, so Germany was Germany? awesome. Um, a few things that I've gathered since coming back. <clears throat> well, you know, since going. America is very, very, very fat. Um, <laughs> uh, Germans... They don't like wasting time, so they're very direct. So if they need to tell you something that might be like offensive or seem rude, they're mm-hmm. just going to say it. They don't give no fucks. Oh. And it's not like they want to offend you or be rude. It's just their culture or whatever is, is uh, let's get fucking going. I don't have time to waste. Let's just be straight about everything and with no confusion or beating around the bush. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I can see that. I mean, they're, you know, half your country's destroyed in a world war. You'd want to get, get to work. Or... Anyway. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, America. Fuck yeah. Germans. They, they, yeah, the allied forces, are the ones who kill all the Jews, not the fucking <laughs> Germans. Um, yes, America is part of the Allied Forces. They also, they, most Germans look like somebody pissed in their cereal. Mm-hmm. They're like, like walking around. They just got like yeah. scowls on their faces. But when you talk to them, they're like, hey, how's it going? Like, yeah. and they're very friendly. And then as soon as you're done talking to them, they're like, and walk away. Like they're angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all look very, very mad. It's just, it's funny. 
I got a German face, buds. I'm constantly like this. Yeah, you look like someone pissed in your cereal. You always got like a frown. Yeah, it's just my face. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for face. noticing. But yeah, no, Germany was awesome. Uh, I didn't get stopped at the border coming back in, so that was good. Just tell them I'm a, I'm, I'm a non-resident American. I'm a, what are you? What no, are you? I, I got my do not detain passport and just walked on through. Nice. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, my passport, when you run my passport, it says do not arrest or detain this person. And then under that, it says uh, this person may be, a, um, may be on the terrorist watch list. And then they give them the number to call for the terrorist watch list. And then they would call to make sure I'm not a terrorist. And it also says do not let this person know that they might be on the terrorist watch list. But I'm it not a terrorist. So. It says that in on your passport? Yeah. Do yeah. not let this person know them. <laughs> That's do what it says. You, it says, do, do not arrest or detain this person. This person may be on the terrorist watch list. Do not let this person know that they might be on the terrorist watch list. And then it gives them the number to call to check to see if I'm on the terrorist watch list. Do they think you're not going to read your own passport? It only comes up when you run it. I can't run oh, my own passport. Oh, oh, that's only interesting. Only cops or border can. Yeah, but interesting. They didn't stop me or anything. Yeah, yeah. Germany's lovely. There's lots of castles. It's all green there. Yeah, it was dope. I'd go I'm back. Get... Very, very compact country though. Yeah. The roads are tiny. Well, I mean, most Europe is pretty tight. Yeah. You know? Pretty tight. Pretty. <laughs> Pretty tight. All right. As much as I would love to uh, continue to wear this, I got to set it to the side. It's a nice hat. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. I put mine on, but it needs to get re uh, re melded or whatever you call it. <clears throat> Remolded. All right. Let's get to business. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Are, what are we doing? So today we are talking about one of my favorite things in this country. It's a it's a blessing that we Watermelon? live in, huh? Watermelon. That's one of your favorite things in this country. Cheeseburgers. Oh, that's up there. But I like something a little bit more. Burritos. No. Cakes and pies. Yeah, you have one running around your house at Fro- all times. Frozen yogurt. No. Mm-mm. A dog. What's his name? Gunner. Today we're talking about guns, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We are talking about finally we're talking about guns. Finally the got episode, the episode ready, buddy. The, the episode that Joe has been waiting for. I have been. All right. All right so uh, uh I'm I'm going to play a little video for you here. Uh this this is my take on how the right or I'm sorry. The, the liberal side of government would like you to see guns. Okay? Okay. All play right. vid- Go ahead and play video one, buddy. Thousands of years, humanity lived in peace without any murders or violence at all. And then, firearms were invented by Guy notorious business partners Alien Bill Weapon and Cornelius Gunn. Person kind was instantly plunged into a horrifying hellscape of death and destruction. And it's all thanks to guns. Here are some facts about these deadly weapons of mass destruction that you might not know. This is a deadly scoped semi-auto revolver with an extended mag clip. A gun just like this one was used to kill Abraham Lincoln. If guns hadn't been invented, Lincoln would still be alive today. This is a 9mm handgun, though I measured it and it's actually much bigger than that. This is one of the most powerful fully semi-automatic clip-loading assault firearms on the planet. Let's take us to the range and see what it does to a human being. 9mm bullet blows the lung out of the body. As you can see, his lung was blown right out of his body. And he's a dummy. He didn't even have love. Terrifying. This is the most fearsome weapon of all, the AR-15, which stands for assault rifle with a power level of 15. It's so heavy you can barely lift it. Help me! Help me! Help me! As heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. It is as heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. This is the shoulder (laughs) thing that goes up. Scary. This is the trigger which decides whom to murder without any human input whatsoever. This is the antenna which receives orders from Nazi Germany. This is a rail which can be used for all sorts of deadly attachments, from a chainsaw bayonet and a Bible attachment 
to a MAGA hat launcher. This is the 50 caliber round commonly used in AR-15s. Let's go ahead and load it in through the 30 clip magazine. 30 magazine clip. Now this gun is ready to blow the head right off of a target, decapitating them instantly. Let's see this weapon of war in action. Trigger warning. <laughs> this is really <laughs> scary. And finally, this is the Fortnite GL Blaster. It fires deadly rocket grenades that punk 12 year olds use to blow up your pathetic fort structures. And then they say horrible things about your mother and floss over your dead body. These WMDs are just horrible. But one thing that these facts can't tell you about is the human cost. Firing these guns, even for this brief demonstration, has given me a severe case of post traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> what? Uh, so obviously I sped the video up um, That's not his real voice I don't know if you knew that or not I mean it made it better because he's a fucking liberal So that's what they so Oh no no that whole, that, It was all satire man He's They're making fun of how I know uh, Oh okay <laughs> I was saying for the video His voice sounding like that made sense I think Yeah Yeah I thought it added to it honestly But um, that that's that's how they want you to see guns these days. Yeah. You know, like, oh, and, and you see, you saw the quote from Joe Biden. Uh, one, one bullet will blow his lung out. No, nope. that's absolutely yeah. the opposite of what an AR-15 uh, round will do or a nine millimeter. Yeah. It's definitely not blowing your lung out. Yeah. Right. I mean, a, a 12 gauge, a 12 gauge will. <laughs> <'Cause> they, <laughs> that pump action shotgun with, or that, you know, that. Biden actually endorsed. So you get two rounds, you shoot one in the air, then you shoot the other one if you have to. That will blow somebody's lung out. Yeah. But a nine millimeter is not blowing shoot. your lung out. <laughs> shoot him in the leg. Isn't that what he said one time too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I say all that, right, to to uh, to get into the fact that clearly they're trying to scare us, right? Yeah. The, the, all of that was to, to just be ridiculous about what guns really are yeah. um but and you, you saw in the video he said the scariest weapon of all time do you remember he said ar-15s yeah scariest weapon of all time that's my favorite gun to shoot uh it, it's Amer it's america i mean it's america's America's favorite gun to shoot <laughs> yeah there's more ar-15s in this country than there are americans yeah that and I, I think right. currently there's like uh, what, 300 million Americans? Yeah, a little bit more. Probably a little more than that. There's more AR-15s in this country than there are Americans, so. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the the whole liberal thing is to ban guns, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's their whole thing. Let's ban guns. Ban no, automatic weapons. Yeah, no, no weapons of war. Every single gun is a semi-automatic. Every single one. Right. Well, except well automatic exactly. weapons are banned in this country. They're banned. Yeah. Except they're... for a few states. Like mo AR fifteen semi automatic. Every pistol is semi automatic unless you modify it yeah. to make it automatic, right? So uh, people they they think that these guns are just weapons of war and uh that they're not. You every time you have to pull the trigger every time to, to make one bullet go. So Yeah. It's kinda it's kinda silly. Uh, I agree. That that being said, why why do you think why do you think that the mili or the our government is so focused on AR fifteens? Any ideas to that? Because they're really fun to shoot. <laughs> I don't know why you know? why that why that specific gun. Um, what do you think is easier for you to shoot? What, what are you more accurate? Oh, AR fifteen, AR fifteen, easily. Rifle. Oh my god, yo! Uh, ding, 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 All ding! Without fail, it's amazing. Yeah, I yeah, love rifles. It. Yeah, pistols are uh, much harder to shoot. It takes a lot more skill to accurately shoot a pistol. Yeah. And uh, most pistols, I mean, even like the best ones, unless you have this clip sticking out here, uh, down here, you're you're only gonna get 15, 17 rounds into one. Banana clip. Right. But, but yeah. an AR-15 or um, an AK, you can have 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 rounds, right? So it kind of eliminates the reload process, which slows you down. But anyways, yeah. play. Um, oh, the other big thing uh, before I move on to that, uh, the government, right? The, 
every time they you talk to somebody who's pro uh, gun control, what do they say? Well, they don't want to take your guns. They just want to regulate them, right? Yeah. And that's what they always say. Go ahead and play video two for me. So to, to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault <laughs> weapon. The fact of the matter is they should be illegal. Bingo. Period. So I guess we're not tinfoil hat wearing <laughs> conspiracy theorists when we say their ultimate goal is to take our guns. I mean, the man literally just said it. And to be honest, I'm not really surprised because that is what they do. Americans who own AR-15s and AK-47s will have to sell them to the government, all of them. You know, the critics call this confiscation. Are you proposing taking away their guns and how would this work? I am. Okay. If it's a weapon that was designed to kill people on a battlefield. <laughs> Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against fellow Americans anymore. I remember that fucking Beto O'Rourke, that piece of shit. So yeah, uh, you heard Yo. it from their lips. They don't want to take our guns. They said it, right? Bingo! Yo, he said he didn't even hesitate, right? He's like, bingo! <laughs> like, listen, Americans <clears throat> are worried that you're going to take their guns. Bingo! <laughs> we are taking them. We're going to take them away. <laughs> he didn't even that's, fucking wait. That's, I mean, in at the end of the day, um, it, it boils down to control, not safety. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Go ahead and play Absolutely. clip three for me. But listen to this. This is staggering because if it was truly about saving lives like they say it is, they wouldn't be focusing on rifles. They wouldn't be focusing on anything else. They would only be focusing on handguns. And per the uh, video I did earlier, look at the actual statistics. Handguns are dramatically a oversized portion of the gun violence in America. Dramatically. I'm not even going into where it is because most of it's in gun control zones. Chicago. But look at this. 8,000 are from Washington, handguns DC. while comparing to 454 from rifles. I'm not going to relitigate the entire video, but that is staggering. Just a bullet point. Personal weapons Ball like hammer. hands, fists, and feet, that's more than rifles. Blunt objects like hammers, almost as many as rifles. But the big staggering outlier per the graph you're looking at is handguns. Now ask yourself why, if you're a gun control advocate, or you're a gun rights advocate, or you're in the middle like I was talking about earlier, why? Why would they lie to you, and why would they make the focus on something that has the least amount of impact if their whole point is the impact? Sound familiar? Why would they lie? Because it's about yeah. control, it's not about the impact, it's not about the outcome. It's about control. Yeah. It's, dude. <clears throat> Well, I mean, the, you ain't gonna get of, no pushback from me on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be an easy episode. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the talk is, you know, um, a, and as you can see in in communist Canada above us, as soon as <laughs> as soon as they start taking your guns, right? Oh, first is gonna be the rifles. We want to save lives, right? The whole point is to save lives. We need to get the rifles out of people's hands. They're using a lot of rifles in mass shootings, right? Yeah, that's what they say. Uh, the deadliest mass shooting ever was, uh, I think, Boston College. He used pistols. Um, they used pi And that being said, yeah. mass shootings represent less than 0% of de gun homicides in this country. Yeah. Less than 0%. We'll get into detailed specifics later, but them going after AR-15s because Wait, hold on. Let hold on. Less than zero percent. Yeah, it's like point zero one percent of deaths. Oh, you mean less than one percent? That's less than well, okay, less than one percent. I'm just sure. making sure. Yeah. I want our That's audience what, to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. less less than one percent. Um, I mean, so it's yeah. it's crazy for them to go after uh, AR-15s, but once they get the AR-15s, what's next? It's got, I mean, at that point, it's got to be pistols, right? Yeah. And after the pistols, guess what? Knives. Knives, because... We're not going to be able to use our kitchen well, knives. Well, well, here's the thing. Uh, in Europe, specifically, I think in the UK, but uh, I think, yeah, I think UK, they have a complete gun ban. Guess what they're starting to ban now? And Google it, folks. Do your own research. They're banning zombie knives. A knife. Zombie knives. Uh, that's what, they have a zombie knife ban. Blades that are like five inches or longer are banned. They're confiscating them. 
Why? Because they have a lot of deaths by knives. Yeah. So when when do when does it stop? Right? When does it stop? Yeah. Well, because <sighs> they don't give a fuck about us. Not only do they not give a fuck, but they also don't understand what guns are. Like they they a lot of times you'll hear uh politicians who are trying to make these rules and regulations and they'll say the most fucked up shit. Go ahead and play the video. That only one bullet can fit inside of a chamber is something you should know if you're going to be making policies that dictate my ability to own a certain firearm or own a certain aspect of the firearm that is incredibly like important that. to how that firearm operates. When it comes to the idea of having a hundred rounds, He's not even talking about just banning 100 rounds in a magazine, because that's really what he's talking about. What he's talking about, he actually wants to ban magazines that have 30 rounds or above 10 rounds. My, my, my legislation says there can be no more than eight bullets in a round. What? <laughs> you're, only allowed to have, you're only allowed to have eight bullets eight, in a round. You're only allowed to have eight rounds in a round? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, he's a clown, yo. He absolutely, and he, he clearly has little to zero experience with, with firearms. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day though, right. Um, that, that's the guy who, who thinks and, uh, quote unquote, thinks that, that, um, the American people at one have no chance against you know the military the whole reason for the second amendment is to stop a tyr tyrannical government yep yes sir you, you, and you what know, do we that, got well it's we're 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 on, we're on the precipice we're on the cusp. Nah, dude they, it's it's ty it's a tyrannical <laughs> government uh but you know when, when they wrote the declaration of independence we had just broken away from a tyrannical government yeah so that's why they wrote it that's why they wrote it. They said, yeah. Clearly, the it second can happen. amendment is to protect the first amendment. A hundred percent. Which, what what has the the Democrats gone after this since the last four five four years? What have Freedom they gone speech. after? Freedom, Freedom of speech, speech. And guns. <laughs> yeah. They went after Both your first amendment, right? Yeah. They've how many people have they canceled? Bro, right? I'm on my third TikTok account. <laughs> So they're taking your freedom of speech. You're not allowed to say certain things, right? Yep. Now they want the thing that protects your freedom of speech. Yeah, sounds about right. But they they clearly and they clearly think that, uh, and we have we've had private conversations about um, whether I th I think the U.S. government would actually uh, hurt its own people. You know, if they're like, oh, we're we're taking all right, a, a, a weapons ban. A lot of Americans would be like, "Come and take them." You know, that's yeah. a that's a phrase. Come and take it. Yeah. Right. I I personally think that a lot of military would look at their brothers and sisters in this country and be like, "You know what? Fuck this. I'm not." That being said, there are the people who are willing to do whatever for money, right? So they're willing to do whatever for their <laughs> for what they're told. To be honest, I mean, listen, I don't think I'm not I'm not saying soldiers are are all brainwashed drones but that's what the military does they brainwash you into being soldiers like there's there's brainwashing going on in the military absolutely so like i don't think when any person in the military joined the military they want to go shoot a child in another country but they do it you know what i mean and i'm not saying that's wrong because a lot of times they use children to do the dirty work and you know, shoot people. But like, I don't know, man, if the government, if this fucking clown Biden told the military that to go take everybody's guns, uh, I think cops and military would be at your fucking door. I really do. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Yeah. And I, I, I I'm, I'm pro, I'm not pro mil. I'm pro. I'm pro person joining the military to protect us. I can't say I'm pro military. But I'm pro our fellow man trying joining the military to protect us. Absolutely. But I'm not against it. I just when I say military, I it's the heads of the military that I don't fucking trust and I'll never trust. I 
I hear where you're coming from. Uh, my response to that would be sp speak to some veterans. Almost every veteran I know don't really side with the military anymore or the government anymore. Yeah. You know, most well, veterans that, I know are like, because they've, they've seen what it is and what, it, what the government's about. And they probably didn't agree with everything that they had to do, but it was part of, you know, being part yeah. of that team or that job. So anyways, I used to be like gung-ho about all that shit. And, and now I, I, I wouldn't trust the government with a piece of fucking gum. I'd so hand think, him a, I'd, I'd be like, yo, hold, hold this 25 cent pack of gum. I'll be right back. I'd be gone for 10 seconds and there'd be fucking Biden would have the whole fucking glob in his fucking mouth chewing it. He'd have it in his hair because he doesn't understand. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, so you think the military would, would uh, disarm and or hurt its own citizens? Um, a lot I'd of them, it, yeah. I'm yeah. not saying all, right. all of them, but I think a lot of them. So does this clown. Play the video. And I love people who said, the blood of liberty, or excuse me, the, excuse me, the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. Well, guess what, man? I didn't see a whole lot of patriots that are out there walking around making sure that we have these weapons. Well, and if you really want to worry about the government, you need an F-16. And the room that's literally filled with the government starts laughing like this. You need an F-16. You don't need a... AR-15? No, I'm not. No, I'm serious. When you think about it, I, I'm not joking. Because that's one of the arguments made by right that we need to be able to protect ourselves against the government. Well, look. That should tell you everything you need to know about why the Second Amendment is so important. As old and senile as Joe Biden is. What do you think I am? Some old senile hermit who lives in a shack and craps her pants? He's a gift to the people because he frequently says the quiet parts out loud. And as a result, he ends up giving the people a clear view of not only these politicians' ignorance and many times sheer stupidity, but also their unbelievably smug and dictatorial elitism. But you have to be willing to pay attention. Yeah, he just threatened to bomb us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Fuck? He's saying, he, I mean, his his response is, you can't defend yourselves. We have tanks and F-16s. I mean, how are you going to how are you gonna stand up against that? He pretty much just said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get what I want. Yeah. Bro. You've been doing that. <clears throat> so... Um, I like to be positive about it, though, man. I like to think that um, our our fellow Americans in the military would say, go fuck yourself, Joe. I hope Your so, fun. but uh, I would hope so. I know people that used to be in the military that I, I, I think would be like, go fuck yourself, Joe, especially since they're all fucking Trump supporters, but the current people in the military that are taking orders from their sergeant or whoever. Trust me. Th those guys are Trump supporters too. I I have friends who are currently in the military. Oh, I drove Uber. <laughs> I, I, I drove Uber uh, in San Diego picking up all tons of military people yeah. and all of them were, were Trump supporters, but man, I just, I don't know. I would I would hope I would hope that they would side with people and not the fucking government, but they work for the government. Yeah. I don't know, man. That being said, let's 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 play the odds, right? Or let let's go into theoreticals. Let's say somehow this administration does get a assault weapons ban. You think you think it would actually you think it would work? No. Why not? Because people are going to give their fucking guns to these clowns. Hold on. Hold, hold on. on. Hold on. COVID, COVID is making me second guess anything Americans would actually do for their rights. Because people are still wearing fucking masks. And it's a well, joke. Not not only that, but um, our, I mean, most gun owners in this country are law-abiding citizens. Yeah. You know, we, fo we follow the rules. I follow the rules. I do mostly. For I mean, with with guns and you know, I follow the rules. So I would say, you know, unfortunately, if if there was a gun ban, most and we were forced 
to give up our guns. Uh, I don't think that would help Americans. A 15-year-old is under arrest in Noonan for armed robbery. Police say when they arrested him, they discovered a, a cache of weapons, some of them modified to be fully automatic. Fox News' Doug Evans has the story all new at 6. There's not much we can tell you about this 15-year-old because he is a juvenile, but wait till you hear about his arrest at a home in Atlanta this past week. The Noonan Police Department Drug and Vice Unit, along with Atlanta Police, were investigating an armed robbery that happened in Noonan back in April. They believed a 15-year-old was one of two juveniles responsible, and they say they found that kid hiding in a bedroom in Atlanta with the covers pulled over him. Here's what police said they also found in that bed with the teen. They knew going in that he was in there based on what the, uh, the woman told them, and they actually found him hiding in a bedroom under covers on a bed with an AR pistol um, fully loaded with the safety off under the blankets. They say the kid's finger was on the trigger of the AR pistol. They say they later found two more handguns in the bed, including one that was stolen during that armed robbery here last April. They say they found two rifles also under the bed. They say all of these guns were in that same bedroom. Many of them were stolen, some from Noonan, Atlanta, Carrollton. In all, more than 10 firearms were seized at that house, along with some extended magazines, double drum magazines for rifles, at least one handgun that they say was modified so it could fire continuously, much like a fully automatic. So, I mean, there right there, that's a common case across the country. Um, so us law-abiding citizens turn in, turn in our guns, and you still have 15-year-olds. I mean, because I know he didn't buy a gun. No. Right? Uh, running around with automatic pistols, right? He probably has a Glock with a switch on it. Um, those aren't legal. Yeah. So all you all you're gonna do when you when you take the law abiding citizens' gun is put us at a disadvantage. Yeah. I mean take away that's our protection. That's all you're doing. Take away our protection. Yeah. Bro, the most of the gun violence is committed in gun safety fucking zones like Chicago yeah. and Baltimore. Uh, I actually I, I mean I can give some stats to you. So uh most thirty seven percent of homicides in uh big cities in this country come from 15 to 24 year olds most places you have to be 18 to 21 to buy a gun yeah uh so the between 2019 and 2021 uh gun death rates in big cities increased almost across the board uh memphis tennessee detroit michigan baltimore maryland cleveland ohio uh uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, uh, Washington, D.C. I mean. Dude, every single one of those cities you named, I wouldn't want to stay the night in. <laughs> like, right. Right. Yeah. And I'll, here, what's the common denom denominator amongst them all? They're all Democrat-ran cities. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, and I don't want to make it racial, but 2021 gun deaths by race in big cities, 54%. Uh, black African American, thirteen percent. Right? Uh, it doesn't say on oh. who. It's just, it's just homicide gun deaths. So fifty four were were black, thirteen point six percent Latino, twelve point nine white, and five point three uh, math Asians. So math <laughs> Asians. <laughs> well, it's not the fighting Asians. No, um, and most most people think it's like it's ra a race shooting a different race. It's, it's it's usually the race killing the same race. Right. It's like usually, it's not racist. It's not racially motivated is what I'm saying. Well, it's I mean, if we're going off statistics, it's the 15 to 24 year old blacks in uh, those inner cities. Yeah. That's statistics. Yeah. So it's usually little gang violence or you know street beef and they're they're shooting and killing each other so yeah um over, over fucking starter jackets and shit or drugs or whatever um <laughs> yeah so going back to the criminals right uh we we've proven that criminals get guns even when they're not supposed to uh you want you want to play the next video pertains to criminals 
America doesn't necessarily have a gun violence problem, but America clearly has a violent criminal problem, and America is doing a terrible job about dealing with that violent criminal problem, which the problem with violence in this country is not people with guns. The problem in this country is people with a propensity for violence, people who have demonstrated violence on a criminal nature before, and we just haven't done enough about it. Firearm offenders sentenced under Section 2K2.1 have criminal histories that are more extensive and more serious than other offenders. Firearm offenders were more than twice as likely to have a prior conviction for a violent offense compared to all other offenders, 60.6 compared to 29.0. So, the data tells us that the people who commit violent offenses with firearms have traditionally, about 60% of the time, previously engaged in other serious violent criminal conduct. Now, the last time I checked in most states and on the federal level, when a person engages in violent behavior, felonious violent behavior, they are disqualified from possessing a firearm. As you can see, shockingly, criminals don't follow the law. The vast majority of firearm offenders... 88.8% sentenced under Section 2K2.1 were prohibited from possessing a firearm. It's that four out of five, roughly 80% of all felonies or violent crimes committed with a firearm are committed by a person who was unlawfully possessing the firearm at the time the crime was committed. That's four out of five. 88.8% were not allowed to have guns and then were charged with a, a... a gun okay. violent gun offense, bro. So yes, let's take the 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 guns from the law abiding citizen, put them at a disadvantage in probably the worst case possible. If you need a gun, chances are you're fighting for your life. Uh I wanna let hey, me before hey, before we hey, what's up? So um they want us at a disadvantage. You you think? The government wants us dead. And I mean, that's looking to be the case. Uh, let me preface it before we get into this video. This is a long one, but this has a lot of st- statistics that I think people should hear and or see. Um, because it really drives the, the realizations that guns are not the problem in this country. If anything, guns are the benefit. Yeah. For, for a lot of citizens. You yeah. know, there's... there's about eight, almost 9,000 gun deaths in this country a year, right? Now, that seems like a lot, but guns are used to stop 1.5 to 2 million crimes every single year. Yeah. So if you're, if you're using guns for 2 million crimes a year to stop them, but there's 8,000 murders. How many more murders would there be? 100% of the t- right. Exactly. So anyways, uh, buckle up, you know, grab your popcorn and a drink. This is, I think this is a, a five or six or minutes. Shit. Uh, but there's some good, and I know I used a lot of Coley and Noir, uh, just so everybody understands, or if you don't know him, he is a, a, an attorney. Um, he is a two-way advocate, obviously. He, he's very passionate about guns, and he's got a lot of good information. Also, if you probably follow him if you know who he is, but... Uh- I think it's fine if you use the same source as long as they're credible. So go for uh, it. He, yeah, no, he, he gets all of his uh, statistics from FBI databases and things like that. So Yeah. And who wouldn't want us to know the truth about okay. guns? So. Yeah. Anyways. The UK is the shining example of gun control for anti-gunners. The UK has a population size of 60 million people. So let's say 40,000 people were murdered with a gun. That would only be 0.06% of the population. Now let's look at America, where there are over 300 million guns and a population size of 327 million people. 40,000 people out of 327 million are only 0.01% of the population. And that's if all of those shootings were murders, which they are not. If you break down the numbers, according to the type of gun deaths, the number of gun murders in this country becomes dizzyingly small. Of that 40,000, 
Roughly 29,250 are suicides. 1,612 are law enforcement shootings in the line of duty. 274 are negligent discharge deaths. And 8,863 are actual murders by way of criminal activity, drug related, or mentally ill people. So as far as actual gun murders, it's not 40,000, it's 8,863 out of 327 million people. Yes, suicides matter, but suicides aren't a gun problem. If they were, America with its over 300 million guns would lead the world in suicides, but we're not even in the top 20. Not to mention universal background checks don't stop suicides, assault weapon bans don't stop suicides, because people don't use AR-15s to shoot themselves. So as far as I'm concerned, using suicide numbers to push more gun control is dishonest as hell. As for law enforcement shootings, that's mostly cops killing criminals who were trying to kill them or someone else. And that's not just with guns. Call me crazy, but I have very little remorse for a criminal who dies trying to kill someone else. When it comes to negligent discharges, guns aren't the problem either. People who are uneducated about guns that have guns are the problem. The lack of firearm knowledge in this country compared to the number of guns in this country is atrocious. And that's because we spend more time demonizing the various organizations we have that provide gun safety and education programs than using these organizations to teach the masses about firearm safety. I think it's safe to say, in a country with more guns than people, that we should spend more time trying to educate the population about guns instead of using BS stats to scare people away from them. At worst, education alone will cut the number of negligent discharges in half. At best, it'll reduce it nearly to nothing. Now, as far as the 8,863 actual murders, on average, 25% of all gun murders in America take place in four cities. Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit, and Washington, D.C. Now ask yourself I'm this shocked. question. From a socioeconomic standpoint, what do all of these cities have in common? You guessed it. Each of these cities have well-known areas where the vast majority of their violence is concentrated in poverty-stricken, underdeveloped neighborhoods who have had the same leadership and power for decades that refuse to do anything to address the socioeconomic issues in these places. And no, it's not just a black culture thing. I know a ton of black families who live in the suburbs and their kids aren't doing drive-bys in their BMWs. It's prolonged exposure to poverty that facilitates the violence in these neighborhoods. And even then, it's a small group of people committing the majority of the violence in these neighborhoods. If the leaders of these areas really wanted to stop the violence instead of ignoring it on non-election years, only to exploit it for votes during election years, they would and they can but they gain and maintain more control in treating the symptom than they do providing the cure, so they don't. We could literally cut that 8,863 gun murders down to 6,648 just by putting our energy towards fixing the socioeconomic conditions in the inner city. And if we're feeling really ambitious, how about we also take that energy and focus on the mental health and figure out why we have the mass shootings that we do. Granted, mass shootings account for less than a statistical zero when it comes to gun deaths. But it would do us some good to address the mental health issue in this country, and guess what else would go down as a result? Suicides. You guessed it, suicides. Long story short, America does not have a gun violence problem. We have a suicide problem and a socioeconomic problem in our inner cities. Yes, we have gun violence, but compared to the multitude of things that are far more likely to kill us, why are we expending so much energy on destroying the Second Amendment when it's a fact that guns are used to kill less than 1% of the population. Gun control is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist and a weapon for people who want control. I know some of you are thinking, well, if you have such a small chance of being shot and killed, why do you need a gun for protection? That answer is easy. The chance of me using my gun in self-defense may be less than 1%, but if I become that percent, I can lose 100% of everything. Yeah. Um... It's all fucking obvious to me, but I'm not the I'm not the I'm not the demographic you're trying to hit here. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, you know, I, I have these conversations with people um, accidentally on purpose a lot. And uh, I have a lot of those their, types of conversations. <laughs> and you used to see their faces when I start, you know, rattling off some of the statistics or um, my my reasons why I like to go shooting and, and uh, own guns. And um, they seem they seem shocked, like I'm I'm telling them fake or, or false information. Yeah. And I'm like, you, I tell them you can look up the stuff yourself. So, you know, like like you saw in the first video we played, 
um, they they want you to believe a certain narrative. So, the TV educates, hmm. and people don't do more research than what fucking whatever clown they're watching on their fucking idiot box is telling them. Nobody dives deep into anything. I mean, we kind of touched on it already, but uh, uh, I was going to ask you where, where and why are, are the murders. Uh, but you want to just go ahead and play the next one? <laughs> you uh, already know where they're I hope at. It's not Joe Rogan. It is. He, he goes know, on. But this in our minds, when we think about it. A mass shooting is somebody you, you have an individual or multiple people who want to go and kill as many innocent people as possible. Right. Right. And we're not talking about people who are shooting each other over disputes. They're different reasons for why they're happening mm -hmm. right and so a lot of the vast majority of the gun violence the homicide aspect of it is from the inner cities that's where it's coming from it's these kids literally when i say kids i'm talking like 17 18 19 20 21 year olds they're shooting each they're shooting at each other now i'm not dismissing that and saying that it's irrelevant and that we shouldn't be, we shouldn't factor that in what i'm saying is it's a totally different reason for why it's happening it's not a gun issue it's a socioeconomic issue because if you take those same kids that look like me, right? I know a lot of, I know, of no, I know a lot of black people or people of color who live in the sub suburbs of America and they're not running around committing drive-bys in the BMWs. They're not. So what's the difference there? They have access to guns the same way these kids have access to guns. And these kids have access to guns illegally in the inner city. The difference is, is prolonged exposure to poverty, but nobody wants to have that conversation. And the reason they don't want to have that conversation is because it is admittedly hard to deal with. It's hard. It's convoluted and it's difficult. So yeah, uh, he, he kind of we kind of touched on it earlier, but inner cities, you know, young kids just commit crimes, you know. And like he mentioned earlier, uh, every election here, they talk about mass shootings, school, sh you know, that one. Uh, Next week, fella. Those things. Uh, they talk about those, but. Mass shootings represent less than one percent of gun deaths in this country. So, not that I'm, and I'm not dismissing them, right? I'm not saying that, eh, it's only a couple people. It's it's really it's messed up and it scars kids for life. Some it's, some instances <clears throat> it's zero people. So I've heard, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you know the majority of deaths are. It's it's gang violence, kid. You know, it's person on person. Yeah. It's not one person going to a place and shoot up, just kill as many people as possible. That's not that's not reality. That's a narrative that they want you to believe about guns, but it's not reality. So, I'm with it. Um, do you know what constitutional carry is? Yeah. What is it? Or you want me to explain? Just explain. Okay, constitutional carry, also known as permitless carry, is a concept where individuals who are legally allowed to possess a firearm are permitted to carry it. Either Arizona, they Nevada. Either openly or concealed. Currently, there are uh, 29 states in this country that are constitutional carry states, and 16, uh, 16 of them have adopted it in the last five years. So the country's going in the right direction. Um, it's a, lo a lot in the Northeast that... Except for, I, I think Maine might have constitution, constitutional carry. But a lot of northeast uh, states don't believe in it. Obviously, the West Coast, um, Hawaii, um, and some other, you know, liberal, off li liberal states. But that being said, a, one, a, a liberal state has adopted it recently. And uh, they have some interesting statistics. Statistics. Am I saying that right? It sounds weird. Sounds like it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, they ha so if you want to play the next video, they'll, they'll deep dive that. Okay. Anti-gun tell it. If you allow people to carry firearms, there are going to be more gun violence in America. But opponents say getting rid of required training on gun safety and handling is a danger. It is nonsensical to think that it is okay uh, for anyone to carry a deadly weapon that has not uh, had to prove themselves. And then if you let people carry more firearms where they don't even have to get a permit to do it, say constitutional carry, that gun crimes are gonna explode exponentially and everyone's gonna die and get shot by guns. But the, 
data is kind of proving otherwise. You see, because, you know, in Columbus, Ohio, um, they recently instituted constitutional carry. They recently instituted constitutional carry in Texas as well. And, um, well, this happened. One of the issues that has plagued the cities across Ohio, including here in central Ohio, is gun violence. A new study just released is now unearthing if the Buckeye State's constitutional carry law impacted gun violence in cities. We thank you for joining us today for NBC4 at 5. I'm Jared Smalley. And I'm Jennifer Bullock. The study was published today by the Center for Justice Research through a partnership between Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost's office and Bowling Green State University. I remember back on June 13th, the state began allowing citizens to carry a concealed weapon without a permit. The study looked at gun violence in the state's eight largest cities. Six saw less gun crimes after the law changed. The data spans from June 2021 to June 2023. I wonder, I'm I, I wonder why you put guns in the hands of the citizens and people think twice about yep. committing gun violence that potentially could end their life instead of them being on the offensive. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's... It, we are. Yeah, if a criminal is is thinking about committing a crime, but knows that people are allowed to carry fucking guns, you're gonna think again. You're gonna think twice. And yeah. what I mean, what direction has the country gone in the past four years? Are are we prosecuting sure. for crimes, especially in no. places like California? Right, they don't even show up. You call the cops, they don't yeah. even show up. For crimes. So if, if there's no repercussions for from the police, yeah. right? Because their hands are tied. I know co I know I have friends who are cops. Their hands are tied, man. Fucking cops. You know? Cops are hands are their their hands are tied on a lot of things. So like if the cops' hands are tied, criminals can do whatever they want. The only the logical thing would be to protect yourself. <laughs> right? Protect yeah. yourself. So you yeah. put guns in, put a gun in your hand. Yeah. The criminal's gonna. And yeah, I'm sorry, I'm doing my. Put a gun in your hand, and the criminal's a lot less. Uh, or the, they're going to try to take advantage of you a lot less. Yeah. Makes um, sense to me. So but, I'm gonna you know. wrap it up. I saw this. Uh, I forget how long ago it was, but this uh, this young lady makes a compelling argument, and some things she says at the end of it uh, really hit home. Um, and I'll, I, I, you were there for the situation, but I'll explain more of that later. Okay. Um, but my question to this video, right? Why, why do you think so many, there's so many Americans, right? That are, uh, part of the NRA or, uh, pro gun or fighting for, you know, the second amendment. And why, what do you think it means to them? Cause that's my question to you, I guess. It's my question. Wait, that's my on. question. To you. Yeah, that's my question. Why are to you. people in the NRA and shit? Yeah, yeah. Why do you think so many Americans are are pro two A or, uh, you know, why do you think? Because you have to be dense not to be one. Like, <laughs> oh <fuck>? shit, <laughs> yo, I'm sorry if you, yo, it's so obvious why you'd want to be able to protect yourself at your discretion, All right? Then. To just let a fucking cop that's, you know, minutes miles away. away. Yeah. Right. yeah. Minutes like, away at best. Yeah. Like, yeah. my dog is going to go up and fucking lick the fucking criminal. He ain't going to bite him. Like, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but. My dog won't even get off the couch or something like that. She's going to pop her head up and say, like. <laughs> Gunner barks, though, and that would scare them away, I hope. Right. Yeah. But. He but if they have a gun, do nothing. you know. Yeah. Hi. All right, play play the next one. This one, uh, this one touched me a little bit in the in the right way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we talk about guns. D will come. That is why law-abiding citizens buy millions of these firearms. When accuracy and stopping power matter, they are simply better. Chairman Nadler, Ranking Member Collins, and distinguished members of Congress. My name is Amy Swearer, and I am the Senior Legal Policy Analyst at the Heritage Foundation's Ed Meese Center for Legal and Judicial Studies. Just as doctors can only recommend an effective treatment plan if they first form a correct diagnosis based on accurate assessment of the symptoms, policy analysts and policy makers 
must have an accurate understanding of the societal problems they are seeking to combat. Unfortunately, too many policymakers appear completely uninformed about basic factual realities related to guns and gun violence. Don't misunderstand me. We all want safer communities. But the characteristics distinguishing so-called assault weapons from non-assault weapons are not factors like caliber, lethality, or rate of fire. Proposals to ban scary-looking features like barrel shrouds or pistol grips are, for all intents and purposes, proposals to force law-abiding citizens to own guns that are harder for them to handle, harder to fire accurately, and more likely to cause them injuries even when they are being used for lawful purposes. Moreover, semi-automatic rifles are not a meaningful driving factor behind rates of gun violence. Two-thirds of gun deaths in this country are suicides, where the type of firearm is essentially irrelevant. With respect to gun crimes, over 90% are committed with handguns. Rifles of any kind are definitively used in only 3 to 4% of gun homicides every year, and an American citizen is four times as likely to be stabbed to death than they are to be shot to death with a rifle of any kind. Despite frequent claims that semi-automatic rifles are the weapon of choice for mass public shooters, in the last decade, over half of these shootings have been carried out with handguns alone. On the other hand, semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15 are so well suited for defensive action against threats in a civilian context that the Department of Homeland Security quite literally designates them as personal defense weapons for law enforcement officers. It is little wonder, then, that millions of law-abiding citizens in this country also choose these types of semi-automatic rifles as their own personal defense weapons. Far from needing to be protected from these rifles, law-abiding Americans benefit when they are allowed to defend themselves with them, particularly in situations where they are outnumbered. Just last week, a homeowner in Rockdale County, Georgia, relied on his scary-looking semi-automatic assault weapon to defend himself against three masked teens armed with at least one handgun who tried to rob him and other residents in their own front yard. Ironically, the rifle deemed an assault weapon by many in this room was used defensively to protect innocent people against assault, while the perpetrators used a non-assault weapon offensively to commit actual assault. Importantly, some of the most famous examples of the defensive use of assault weapons by civilians come from scenarios where the government has been either unable or unwilling to defend entire communities from large-scale civil unrest. And there are some here today who still genuinely don't understand why or how anyone would need such scary-looking rifles for purposes other than mass murder. And so I have permission from my mother to explain it to you by partially embarrassing her. My mother did not grow up with firearms, and they will never be her favorite thing in the world. In fact, she'd never handled a firearm until I took her to the range for the first time several years ago. Now, I love my mother, but like every other novice with a handgun, she was quite bad. I mean, she struggled to hit a stationary target from six yards out under ideal conditions. And then she picked up an AR-15. And I watched my mother put a fist-sized grouping of lead in the center mass of a target from 20 yards out. That is why law-abiding citizens buy millions of these firearms. When accuracy and stopping power matter, they are simply better. Americans use firearms to defend themselves between 500,000 and 2 million times every year. Now, God forbid that my mother is ever faced with a scenario where she has to stop a threat to her life. But if she is, I hope politicians protected by professional armed security didn't strip her of the right to use the firearms she can handle most competently. Frankly, I hope she has in her hands the scariest-looking assault weapon she can find so that we can both be confident in her ability to end the threat. Thank you. All jokes aside, um, yeah, she's yeah, cute. I, oh, that's no, not where you're going. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not where you're going. <laughs> all jokes aside, you were there. The way the she first was talking time. made her even cuter. Sorry, go ahead. All the, you were there the first time I uh, showed my mom how to how to shoot a gun. Yeah, you know, I showed her how to shoot my my pistol. I showed her how to shoot my AR-15. My mom sucked with that pistol. <laughs> <laughs> she sucked. I gave her that AR-15. What'd she say? Ooh, I like this. Ding, yeah. ding, ding, ding. Yeah. You know? And she was hitting. You know, she figured it out she was hitting. She figured it out. Uh I like her, I would I would hate to know that uh if my mom needed it, she wasn't allowed to use an AR fifteen to, to defend herself. Yeah. You know? And like this isn't just you know, I want a gun so I can, you know, so I can go murder someone. This is, I want a gun so I can defend my friends and family, my loved ones from one, a potential criminal or two, a tyrannical government, you know, and 
the fact that they want to take our take the AR-15 from the American people is crazy. It's like because as we've proven, criminals don't give a fuck about your rules. They don't care. Yeah. They go out and get guns. You saw almost ninety percent of people charged with gun offenses already had offenses that told them they shouldn't have guns. Yeah. So clearly they don't give a fuck. So in the fight for my life, I want the most advantage ever. If I could buy a fucking tank because I knew somebody was coming to my house with a fucking gun, I would buy a tank. Why wouldn't you want a law by somebody who's going to follow the rules to have an advantage against a criminal? It makes no fucking sense to me. Put the put the law abiding citizen at the disadvantage. It makes You're sense fucking... to me because I know. How about this? I'll give up my AR-15 if uh, the Secret Service has to give up all of their guns. Let them protect you with knives only. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Let's put you at a disadvantage, politicians. Does that make fucking sense to you? Because it doesn't make sense to me. I think you want to have the advantage when somebody's protecting your life. I want the same fucking uh, abilities. Why is that crazy? It's not. It's you're right. It's not. Thank you. I I feel they like want Alex Jones us right dead. Now. They don't give a fuck about us, bro. I, I don't think they want all of us dead. Somebody has to pay taxes so they can continue to sit on their no. fat asses and get rich. They get, dude, when they kill us off, they get oh, our trust and all dude. the millions of dollars from our trust. <sighs> they want us dead, dude. Every time that they give us a ticket, they create a bond in our name and get millions of dollars off that ticket. It's not just a $60 fucking ticket that we pay. They create a new bond. And they get millions off of it. Facts. That's not theory. That's facts. Anyway, did you know, I, really quickly, this is the lead into next week's episode. Did you know Adam Lanza, the shooter at Randy Book, during the shooting, he left the school, put an AR in his trunk, and then went back in the school and continued to do shooting, and then they found the AR in the trunk? I did not know that. How the fuck and why the fuck would he do that? So then they could find the gun in the trunk on the news. Oh, my mm. God, an assault rifle. Yeah. There's, there's step one that you know that that fucking whole story was bullshit. They want to take your fucking guns. And next week, we're going to debunk the biggest, one of the biggest indoctrination camp shootings of all time. And we're going to poke every fucking hole in it. And I'm going to prove to everyone that. None of that shit fucking happened, and no children were harmed in the making of that movie. Uh, just to wrap it up, I have a couple more statistics for you guys. If you're still interested or paying attention, uh, U.S. has the highest gun own ownership rate in the world, yet we we uh, rank 28th in murders. The most guns, 28th in murders. Um, That's about right. Oh, Switzerland, population of 8 million people, armed with estimated 2 million guns. With a limited gun legislation. So they have very loose gun rules in Switzerland, right? With uh, a lot of guns. Switzerland's overall gun homicide rate is practically zero. I have a lot so, of guns uh, Another, another uh, homicide rate. Practically zero. You don't forget, America's homicide rate is practically zero. It's less than 1% by a lot. Yeah. We lead we lead the world in guns. Less than 1% homicides. Yeah. Just saying. Bro. Preach your Country. choir, baby. Preach your choir. <laughs> Countries with the highest murder rates? I think uh last I knew, I could be wrong. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but last I knew it was Venezuela. Guess guess what else Venezuela is? A shithole. Because, <laughs> because, what kind of uh, government yeah. do they have? Yeah. It's, uh, isn't it a... Uh, communist. Uh, uh, close. It's the other one that's really close to communism. Socialism. There it is. Bernie Sanders. Bernie fucking Sanders. So. Yeah. Chomo. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, I'll get off my high, off my soapbox here. Uh Guess what? I asked two different pilots when I was flying to Germany. 
What'd you ask them? If they well, had two seen different the curve? sets. I was walking up the runway and there was two pilots that were coming up the runway or they were behind me walking up the runway. And I turned around and I said, Hey, is the earth flat? And both of them without hesitation said yes. And then the second one goes, I've never seen any curve in my life. Then my flight back when I was getting off the plane, one of them was standing in the cockpit and I said, earth's flat, ain't it? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, baby. Confirmation. Anyway. Uh, thank you for presenting during this episode. Uh, I appreciate yeah. it. Sorry if it sucked. It didn't. I oh, I thought it was very, very informative. Oh, good. Well, I hope our fans liked it. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, place them in the uh, in the in the comments down there. Uh, I'll share, like, sure subscribe. Share, like, subscribe. I'll make sure to uh, to interact with you guys if you have any questions, um, or if I said something wrong and you want to correct me. That's where you do it. Stop swallowing razor blades, dude. Uh, I can't wait to. You're gonna post a video. I'm gonna send you the clip of the video that made me like this, and you're okay. gonna laugh. Great. We'll put it in. We'll we'll show everybody so they understand. All right. <clears throat> and uh, and I have a concert to go to in two days, so I'm gonna lose it even further. Great. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Godspeed. Godspeed. You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. I got a message for all you liberals out there. You want my gun, my firearm? Come take it from me. Just walk through my door, come into my home, and take it from me with your weak, soft, liberal, girlish hands. Just try to put those hands on me, those soft, liberal hands. Put them on me, on my body. Just slowly, gently dragging your fingers up and down my arm, giving me goosebumps. You want my gun? Come kiss me for it. But not like right away. Don't be too obvious with it. Let's do that thing where we our faces get close to each other, and you know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time, and you just stare at each other's lips, but you're waiting for the right signal to give yourself over to them completely. Like in a walk to remember. Come do that for my gun. Bite my lip and play with my hair for my fire wrong. If you want my gun, come spank me for it. Not like not, not like too hard, but like like still hard, you know? Like 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 hurt me but make me feel safe at the same time, you pussy liberals.